verse one more time. He became sin. Oh, he became sin. Who do no sin that we might become his righteousness? He humbled himself. Once again, it's good to be able to talk about the Lord together. And we come to the part now where uh, Moses has been on Mount Sinai for 40 days, second time round. And it says in Exodus 34, 29, that when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, the skin of his face shone. The Apostle Paul, in writing to the Corinthians, in the second epistle, says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Imagine it. For six weeks, 24 hours a day, Waking and sleeping, Moses communed with the Lord. He'd already been on the mountain uh, a few weeks previous for 40 days again. And here he was for another six weeks after just a short time. It's evident that being in the presence of God had a huge effect and a huge bearing on Moses' appearance. His face shone. During that time, he had no other communication. He had not seen another person. He hadn't heard another person. He did not see another creature. There was no other sound on the mountain. He even slept in that divine environment. His only interaction was with God. Now, of course, this was a very unusual season, but there are lessons that we too can learn through this in the, the amount of time that we give to the Lord. And it was when Moses descended the mountain that a very definite manifestation was seen by those who met him, Aaron and the rest of the people. His face shone, as I said, and while we spend time with the Lord, we will not have that same experience as Moses did until we see Jesus. However, Paul teaches us that there is a glory upon the believer as the process of change continues. He writes that this image of Christ likeness comes about by transformation from glory to glory. And the Greek word used for that indicates that it is a process or happening over a period of time. And the process that resulted in the shining of Moses' face on the mountain began many years previous when he had spent 40 years in the wilderness. The Bible says he was in the backside of the desert. And during that time, he went through a dismantling of his own brash nature until, until one day God came and spoke to him and called him to go and to set the children of Israel free from Egypt. 
<clears throat> as mentioned last week, initially he was very brash, he was very bold and full of himself, and initially he had said, here I am, when he went to uh, help his brother who was being beaten. But 40 years later, when he came out of Egypt, uh, sorry, when he came out of the wilderness and God called him, no longer was there that here I am. It was a case of who am I? I am I'm no one. And that's the kind of person God can use because he had gone through the ringer of God's dealings that resulted him knowing that without God, he could do absolutely nothing. Therefore, when Moses came to this season that we see, he did not seek glory. He did not seek personal glory. It actually says that when he came down off the mountain, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone. One commentator said that Moses did not write this inv information out of uh, vanity, personal vanity, but he wrote it because he was instructed to write it by God. And therefore, is it, as the commentator said, it is for our learning. Interestingly, Moses' face did not shine after emerging from the presence of the Lord for 40 days in the previous time. <clears throat> so there was no motive on his part going into the presence of the Lord, seeking personal glory. There was none of that whatsoever. Having been in the presence of the Lord for extended time, his character displayed humility, self-abandonment, complete obedience, and a passion for God's people and a love for God's people. You see, a true revelation of the Lord reduces our self-image to zero. We don't see anything in ourselves. As I shared recently, a few weeks ago, I felt the Holy Spirit over the Christmas period direct me to enter a season of prayer for 40 days. The object was to pray for the nation and the church as a whole in our country. Well, three weeks have now passed, and although I have prayed for these things, I have to confess that every time I come before the Lord, I am not seeing the state of the nation and the state of the church. But every time I'm coming before the Lord, it's like I'm having the experience of Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 6, we read that Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up. And uh, consequently of seeing the Lord, he said, woe is me, I'm a man who's undone, man of unclean lips, dwell in the midst of a people who are wicked and unclean. And strangely, this has been my experience over the last three weeks. Whenever I'm coming before the Lord, yes, I do pray for the nation, I do pray for the church, but constantly all I'm seeing is myself. And that's kind of telling me something. If God is going to change the nation, if God is going to change the church, God cannot change the nation. He can change the church, and the church is the vehicle by which he can touch the nation. But if God is going to do that, it's going to start with me. It's going to start with us as individuals. And when we spend time in the presence of the Lord, it's ourselves that we begin to see. And when Paul speaks of being changed from glory into glory, there is a, a need for personal adjustment. There's a need for a cutting away of the flesh, and that can be very painful. So just like Isaiah, when he came before the Lord and he saw the Lord, it was himself, woe is me, there was pain. And I have to say that even as I've come before the Lord, there's been like a spiritual pain as I have begun to examine my own heart. And so when Paul is saying about being changed from glory into glory, he's speaking in the context in 2 Corinthians 3.18. He says, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord being transformed into the same image. Now, last week at the end of what I had to say, I quoted C.S. Lewis, those famous words that he says when he says, prayer doesn't change God, it changes me. But as I've been praying, I've 
realize this. It's not the act of prayer that changes me. It's not even the prayer uttered that changes me. It is the interaction with God when I am in prayer that changes me. It is coming before his presence. It is knowing the presence of the Holy Spirit. And that personal communion with God, that changes me. Peter in his epistle gives a picture of what being changed from glory to glory looks like. He commences in his first epistle with salvation. Of course, that's where the biggest change takes place. And he says in uh, 1 Peter 1.10 about our salvation, something which the prophets seem desired to look into. And then he continues about laying aside the works of the flesh. Laying aside the works of the flesh is going to be painful. Then about our Christian conduct before the world. Then about submitting to human government. Then submitting to our employers. Then how wives should treat their husbands and how husbands should treat their wives. Then having love one for another. Then how to respond to criticism even when you're in the right. Then how to take Christ's example. Then how to serve each other. And so the list goes on. And as you read this epistle, read the epistle. Take some time to read it out. It won't take long, just a few minutes. But as you read this epistle, you see it's a process of change. It's a process of laying down one thing and putting on another. The glory of God, you see, is not in a cloud anymore. That was Old Testament. The glory of God is not in the pillar of fire. The glory of God is not on the mountain as when Moses uh, went on to Mount Sinai. For the glory of God is in the face of Jesus Christ. And if we become like him, then as Peter says, the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. So when Peter is making all these uh, uh, stipulations, if you like, about how we need to change, how we need to lay off our old self and put on the new man, put on Christ. He said, that if you do these things, the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. In other words, you're changed from glory into glory. When we let God change us, like Moses, we become totally unaware of how we appear. But others will see the difference in us. And we will be conformed to the image of God's son. We've all heard, heard of uh, John and Charles Wesley. We've all heard how they struggled as Anglican ministers with the whole issue of salvation. And when they came to that point of being changed, Charles Wesley and John Wesley wrote numerous hymns. And of course, one of the most uh, popular or well-known hymns was that hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. And it comes to the final stanza where Charles writes, Finish then thy new creation. Think about that. The new creation is when we come to Christ and we are changed by the Holy Spirit from uh, sinful creatures to forgiven creatures, to those who have been made new in Christ Jesus. And he says, finish then your new creation. In other words, when we come to Christ, we are not the finished article. We have been changed, but then there has to be a laying aside of all fleshly things and things that don't please the Lord and putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. Finish then thy new creation, pure and spotless, let us be. Let us see thy great salvation perfectly restored in thee. Changed from glory into glory till in heaven we take our place till we cast our crowns before thee lost in wonder love and praise my question to you this evening is have you begun the journey yet have you begun the journey yet are you ready to meet the lord we are living in increasingly difficult times and very soon i'm convinced we will meet God face to face. And in times like these, in this great trial the world is going through right now, 
In times like these, we need a saviour. In times like these, we need an anchor. And we need to be very sure that our anchor holds and grips the rock who is Christ Jesus. Because from the moment that we come to him and he forgives our sins and he cleanses us and changes us, from that moment onwards, it's a case of being changed from glory into glory when we become more like Jesus every day. That is our goal, to be more like Jesus every day. As I said, our faces, our faces may not shine like Moses in a physical sense, but we will certainly show the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ in who we are, in following him, in walking in his footsteps. Talk to him now and allow the Lord Jesus to commence the change in you. I trust that the Lord will meet you right where you are. Amen.